Hi guys, this is Horizontal Projectiles 2. Um, I hope that you actually saw Horizontal Projectiles 1 um, in order that you'll actually know what we're doing right now. Um, also, I hope that you saw that and then tried the problem before skipping on to this one. If not, shame. But one way or another, even if you weren't confident enough to do it on yourself, here we go. Um, we've got these variables for our setup. We said that the first thing we were going to do is try to solve for time. Okay, so I've got to pick an equation over here that I can get time, but I don't need final velocity. And the equation that I'm going to choose is this guy right here. Um, I'm going to change it just a little bit because I'm using the y-axis rather than the x-axis. So instead of having things like delta x, it's obviously going to become delta y. So step one. Write out our equation. Delta y equals v o y t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, that's going to give us our time. So the next thing that we need to do, we need to realize that we can plug in some information about this. First of all, we know that the initial velocity in the y is zero, so this term is going to cancel out. Second of all, we know that um, this variable right here, a, is going to represent negative g in this case. And so we can rewrite this as delta y equals negative one half g t squared. Okay, doing a little bit of algebra, I can rearrange that to be t equals the square root of two delta y divided by g. Okay, so that's going to be your hang time. Um, and assuming that velocity is going to be zero, that's pretty much always going to be your hang time. Now, once we've got the time, and we can plug that in over here, now we can solve for x. Um, now we've got two ways of doing this. We can either uh, be a little bit smart and realize that if I take initial velocity and multiply it by time, then I get distance. Simply the fact that you know, velocity is distance over time, and so if I rearrange this, then I can get velocity times time equals distance. I could do it that way. Or if I've memorized these equations and I'm kind of a plugger and chugger, then I can actually use the same equation that I just used before. And what I'll find out is that this term will cross out, and I'll be left with, oh, look, Velocity times time equals distance. That'd be cool. So you can do it either way, whether you just think about it for a second, realize this, or you actually pull out this equation a second time and use it for x. One way or another, you're going to get to something that says essentially delta x equals v o x times t. Now I'm going to plug in that for time. I'll get delta x equals v o x times the square root of 2 delta y divided by 